Hey guys, everything new under the sun. Debka file. This is the latest information out of Iran about the nuclear deal. Iran will quit nuclear deal, restart enrichment, ramp up military tension. And if you don't think this is an instigator, a, uh, an excuse, a reason for Israel to do a preemptive strike now, well then I think you have your head in the sand. This is from May 11th, yesterday, 2018. This is, again, Debka file, uh, Debka files, uh, Debka.com, rather, Debka files, um, military intelligence website, exclusive, Tehran will challenge the U.S. by restarting nuclear fuel enrichment. This is going to cause uh, a preemptive strike by somebody. Israel is going to take them out. Israel has stated that they will not let Iran get nuclear weapons, and they have continually struck Iran, whether it's directly on their soil, stealing uh, nuclear papers, nuclear documentation by the Mossad, or striking them significantly and, and in a huge way uh, in uh, Syria itself. Tehran will challenge the U.S. by restarting nuclear fuel enrichment and ramp up its military confrontation with Israel. What does that speak of? That speaks of Isaiah 17 and Ezekiel 38. This is coming. This is coming fast. This is all leading up to um, May 14th, the 70th anniversary of, the, uh, of Israel becoming a nation. Many uh, prophecy teachers are saying this is a significant event. Some people are saying this is a rapture event timeline. I, I don't think it's a rapture event timeline. I think it's a turning point. It's a milestone. It's going to kick off some of these biblical prophetic battles. I think the next thing that we see is probably uh, Psalm 83 taking up the inner circle of nations and or Isaiah 17, maybe at the same time, where they take out Damascus. And then from there, it builds. Then Iran says, that's it. We're calling in our allies. We're marching down to Israel. And so something has to happen to Western powers, to Saudi Arabia, to uh, the United States as a world superpower. Do they just not want to come to the aid of Israel in Ezekiel 38? Or are they actually taken out of the picture by economic collapse? The Iranian leadership reached these decisions uh, on Thursday, May 10th, after Israeli warplanes smashed its military assets in Damascus, area that morning. Debkofi's exclusive intelligence sources report these steps follow the strategic plans Tehran had drawn up for the eventuality of a U.S. quitting the 2015 nuclear deal. Apparently Iran had been expecting that. <clears throat> In the coming weeks, therefore, Tehran will choose its moment to abandon the nuclear deal and restart high-level uranium enrich enrichment. I don't think they need it. I think they can buy nuclear weapons from North Korea. Um, but, you know, who knows exactly what uh, where they're at. I assume the IDF, Israeli intelligence, knows exactly where they're at. And they're going to strike prior to uh, Iran actually having <clears throat> the capability to strike Israel. Because it is existential. It, it relates to the existence of Israel. And uh, Israel's existence is in the balance. Um, what they don't realize right now is God's got their back and God will protect them. But Ezekiel 38 will come along. The IDF... Uh, will um, uh, attempt to defend against uh, the allies uh, related in Gog Magog, <clears throat> but will be driven back and will and there will be huge casualties. But the Lord will stand up, show His great power, and push back Gog Magog. And that's what's coming down the pipe. It goes on in light of Iran's strategy. The U.S. after quitting the, the nuclear deal Thursday asked the nuclear watchdog IAEA to continue inspections of the Iranian nuclear program. Washington intends to keep independent monitors accessing Iran's nu nuclear facilities for as long as they are permitted. <clears throat> Couple of points here. Tehran does not believe that Israel's massive assault on Iranian bases, missile stores, logistic centers, and other military sites in Damascus and points um, south on uh, Thursday night described as its largest air operation since Yom Kippur was triggers, triggered by the Quds rocket barrage. So they don't believe that Israel's attack was triggered by the rocket barrage um, that Iranian forces um, triggered on Israel. Iranian strategists, yes, they have strategists who are trying to figure out and, and decide exactly how this is going to go. They are convinced that it was planned in advance by the Trump administration and Netanyahu government as Act 1 of a major joint campaign. So they expect, they think there's a large military <clears throat> campaign against Iran and uh, and so they're going to get even, you know, they're, they're paranoid. They're paranoid, they're embarrassed, and they're backed into a, into a corner here because Israel's wiping the floor with them. Israel is taking them out of Syria. This angers them. Their stated goal is to destroy the great Satan, the United States, and the little Satan, Israel. 
And we know in the last days, Persia, <clears throat> Iran, is part of Gog Magog. And this is coming down the pipe very, very quickly. Number two, Tehran discounts European ability to preserve the nuclear pact. Um, Europe uh, is all trying to get together. Angela Merkel and uh, French President Macron, they're trying to get together and save this deal. But Tehran doesn't believe it's going to be saved by them. And in fact, Tehran wants to get out of it just because the U.S. is out of it now. And uh, Rouhani countered by demanding guarantees that no European Union member would join in Trump's new sanctions, either directly or indirectly. Uh, and indeed, as they spoke, the new U.S. sanctions were clamped down on six people and three companies with ties to Iran's Revolutionary Guard. Number three, Tehran expects the coming rounds of U.S. sanctions to be exceptionally harsh and comprehensive. If the pressure forces Iran to agree to negotiate on a new nuclear deal as demanded by Washington, its leaders would not start out with a weak hand that they hold at present. They believe they can only improve the odds in their favor by military escalation. So they're going to escalate it militarily basically to scare the U.S. to say, okay, okay, we'll back down, we'll, we'll uh, come back to the table, just stop attacking Israel, basically. That's what they're uh, looking for. So this is huge. So the, the, uh, the intelligence suggests that Iran is going to escalate, um, and this escalation is going to trigger Isaiah 17. This is going to trigger Israel to do what it needs to do and, and to fight back against and possibly a preemptive strike on nuclear power in Iran, how many embarrassments, how many document seizures, how many uh, how many Iranian citizens, in fact, in Syria have to die uh, before Iran attacks overtly uh, with their military and calls in their allies to attack Israel? How many more? You know, it's at this point, it's imminent. It's any minute now that this stuff is going to play out. Rouhani says, said 30s, that Iran does not want new tensions in the region. He was playing for time for Iran to get its next moves, resumption of our enrichment and armed confrontation in place. They are readying for war. They're just trying to buy their time to build up their forces. That's what they were trying to do in Iran. Uh, sorry, Syria. That's why they weren't doing a ton of stuff against Israel. They're building their forces. Um, that's what Russia is doing. It's building its forces in Syria for a large offensive uh, on Israel. Uh, but Israel's kind of taking them out slowly, cleaning up. Um, before they get uh, too built up in Syria, uh, but they will get to a point where they're going to say, "That's it. We're just going to we're going to invade. We're going to invade with our allies." And uh, when does a Russian soldier get killed in one of these strikes, uh, on purpose or not? Maybe he's placed in an Iranian base that Israel happens to strike, and, and Russia has come out and already stated it's a red line. If you hit, kill one of our people, we're going to come in with our nuclear weapons. And uh, what do we have in Zechariah? And uh, uh, apparently in Ezekiel 38, we have uh, a nuclear confrontation, which pushes Israel back and causes uh, God to have to come in and back it up and show his power to the world. But again, we don't have the U.S. We don't have Western leaders uh, backing Israel up. What happens to them? A worldwide economic collapse? That could be uh, coming imminently on the world, and that would be a great explanation as to why they are not... They don't exist in uh, Ezekiel 38 specifically. I will uh, leave it there, guys. Huge things happening in the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Do you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? He's coming back soon. I cannot stress that enough. Time is going to get hard. Persecution is coming. The world is going to uh, flip into end time, into um, you know, almost into Mad Max scenario at any moment now. Are you prepared now? Is your heart prepared? Are you ready to see Jesus? Are you ready... Uh, for persecution. Is your heart ready? Um, you need to be ready for this stuff. This is coming. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.